Welcome to Make Something with me, David Picciuto, and today we're going to make this entryway table. It's a place to put your keys and stuff as you come inside the house, and we're only going to use two power tools for this, a circular saw and a hand drill. Check it. So today's video is going to be really fun and interesting for a couple of reasons. One is Mintwax sent me this challenge box which contains some of their new finishes that's going to allow us to be really creative with this project. And I put the limitation on myself to only use two power tools, a circular saw and a hand drill. All of the products, all of the materials you could get at a Lowe's. So this is a project anybody can do with any amount of experience. Let me show you what is in this box. Just like I used to do as a kid before Christmas, I've already peeked inside. I already know what's in here, but let me show you. Check this out. They did their research and they know that I love wiener dogs. They sent me some wiener dog lights. Check this out. How freaking cool is that? Look at what I got. We got wiener dog lights. We've got all kinds of brushes. We've got a water bottle, soft touch wax, grain highlighting wax. In here is a gift card to Lowe's to go purchase some materials. So we got all the brushes that we need. We got the wiener dog lights. Now we need to take that Lowe's gift card that they sent me and on their dime, go pick up some materials and some of their cool stains. Here is the really, really cool thing that I am excited about. You can get a base stain and have it tinted at the paint counter to any one of these these colors. That means we get to be really creative with this project. I had them tin up some yellow, some orange, some red stain, and then you can buy their black stain. And I'm gonna use those four colors for the top to create this retro 70s vibe that I'm going for. The beautiful thing about red oak is it accepts stains and dyes better than most would. So this is going to work very well for this project. I got four of these one and a half inch by one and a half inch boards that we're going to use for the four legs. And then I also got two of these one and a half inch by three quarter inch boards that we're going to use for the stretchers. That is all we need to make the base. The table top, I've got some five and a half inch wide boards. We're gonna worry about the top later. The top is going to accept all the colorful colors that we're going to use to color this table. How many times can I say color? What makes this project so easy is all the red oak is already surfaced on all four sides. It's already sanded smooth. All we have to do is cross cut and use some creative joinery to attach everything together. And that is why anybody can make this project with some simple tools and not a lot of experience. Let's start chopping up some wood. So I have all four posts clamped together so I can cut them all at the same time so they're all the exact same length. I'm gonna use the circular saw and the speed square as a guide so I can cut nice and straight. So now that we have our four legs cut, it is time to cut the four short stretchers out of this one and a half by three quarter inch red oak. They need to be eight inches long. I've cut them roughly to nine inches. They're an inch oversized. That way I can clamp them all together and do one final pass on there. Because this is so small, I had to clamp my speed square in there, but this is going to work out great. I release the clamp here and now all of our four short stretchers are the exact same size. I'm going to do the exact same thing with the three long stretchers. Cut them oversized, clamp them all together and do one final pass to get them all the exact same length. So now we are going to assemble the two ends first. So the top of the table is facing you. This end is going to be flush with the ends and then the bottom stretchers are going to be four inches up from the bottom. I do want all of these centered 
on here. So I need to bring this up 3 8 of an inch. I have three pieces of 1 8 inch plywood that I can set on my bench here. I can lay this on top of that and that's going to space it perfectly in the middle of the legs. If you don't have plywood, if you don't have anything 3 8 of an inch thick, use a deck of cards. Use whatever you have. So now we're going to add a little bit of wood glue to the end grain. Not much, just a little bit. Any wood glue will work. We'll just clamp that together. You do want to make sure on the top that that it is nice and flush. And so now I'm just doing the same thing with this other end, clamping it up, let them sit and dry for about an hour or so. So once the glue is dry, remove the clamps, put the clamps back on, but out of the way of the joint. And then go ahead and mark where your stretchers are on the opposite end so we know where to drill the dowels. The dowels are going to go right in the middle of that stretcher, but slightly below center. It's going to go slightly below center because when we put on the long rails, it's going to go slightly above center and then they won't cross. We are going to drill in two and a half inches deep with a five sixteenths inch drill bit. I've got a piece of tape on my drill bit at two and a half inches to let me know when to stop. And we're going to drill right in here, nice and slow and check to make sure you're drilling straight. You're probably wondering how was this held up with all these clamps on there? And I have these cutoffs that are just sitting on my bench. And then this is sitting on top of those cutoffs. So now I'm just going to take a flush trim saw and cut a two and a half inch long 5 16 red oak dowel. So once you have that dowel, we're going to throw some glue in there and you're going to take a mallet. If you have one, a hammer will do and just tap that in. Don't whack it, just nice easy taps. We don't want to break these joints that aren't strong yet. If you really smack at it, this is going to mushroom out and it's not going to go all the way through. And since this is red oak, I guarantee you, glue is going to squeeze out the pores. So have a wet rag ready. Yeah, that's got a different sound. It's bottoming now and the dowel is mushrooming now. Take care of that glue squeeze out right away. You don't want to let that dry because it's going to be really hard to clean later. Once you have that glue cleaned out, you can take your flush trim saw and cut that off. This, the teeth don't stick out the sides and so it can rub right up against the surface without marring the surface too much. Might a little bit. And there you go. That's one. Now we got to do the one on the other side. Once you've drilled and doweled the four joints on this set of legs, do the same thing on the other set. And we should have our two side assemblies ready to go. And now we can attach the long stretchers. This can be a little bit tricky. If you are new to woodworking, you might not have many clamps. If you plan on doing more woodworking, I suggest that you go and get a couple of long clamps just for this. Don't be surprised at the cost of clamps. There are alternative ways of doing this. One way would be to clamp this to my bench here with a smaller clamp and then clamp this over here to my bench again with the smaller clamp. And then from here, we could drill our hole, put in our dowel. The only problem with this is we're not going to get side pressure and it's not gonna pull the pieces together. So it could get a little sloppy. Another way is to take a ratcheting clamp, wrap it around the bottom here, and then ratchet it together. That also gets a little bit tricky, but you gotta use what you have today. I've got some woodworking clamps and I'm going to go ahead and use them. You can never have enough woodworkers telling you you can never have enough clamps. True fact. I'm going to put some glue on here and then clamp this together and start drilling and putting in the dowels just like before, except this time the dowels are going to go slightly above center instead of slightly below center. So the dowels don't cross. So the base is done. Of course, we could get a couple of pieces, glue them together and make the top. 
but let's get a little bit creative. Let's have the grain go this way so we'll cut a bunch of shorter pieces and then connect them and then attach the top. All of the cuts we made today have been cross cuts using the speed square. And six of these makes the perfect size top for this table. Now we could attach those and then call it a day. I'm gonna get a little bit more fancy and since I'm going to stain each one of these a different color, I want to play with the widths a little bit. So I'm going to clamp a straight edge onto some of these boards and do a rip. Because these boards are smaller, you might find it tricky to get your straight edge to clamp to the board. If you don't have the right clamps, you could always use double-sided tape to tape down your straight edge, run your cut, and then you can pry that off and clean up the tape. In woodworking, there are many ways to do nearly everything. Before we stain, I need to add this wood conditioner. This will allow the oak to take the stain evenly. And this is a pretty simple process. You just brush it on, you let it sit for a minute or two, you wipe off any excess, and then let it dry for like 15 minutes, and then you are ready for staining. This is all water-based. I don't need to condition my hands, so I'm gonna put on some gloves. Once that conditioner dries, you give it a very light sanding because that water-based pre-stain raises the grain just a little bit. I have the four stains that I tinted at the paint counter at Lowe's, and then I even tried it out on four pieces to make sure that this is what I want, and this is exactly what I want. This is going to be really cool. These stains that you can get tinted, you can get semi-transparent or you can get the solid color. I chose the semi-transparent because I still want these pieces to look like wood, just colorized. This is all water-based and the great thing about water-based is it dries fast and has a very low odor. This piece is going to be black and so I'm just going to take a lint-free cloth and just wipe it right on there. You do want to wipe off any excess. Ooh, look at that. I <laughs> should have done the whole project red. You can come back and do a second coat once it dries if you want it to be a little bit more vivid. I got my clamps back out and we're going to glue everything together. And this should be pretty darn level. And so now that we got that glue in there, we can tighten up our clamps and let that sit for a couple hours and dry. For the base, I also want to play with some colors. So I got the Minwax Wood Effects and Color Wash and I played around with some scrap pieces here. This is the Weathered Gray, which looks cool. This is the White Wash. I really like the way this looks, but not for this particular project. This one is the Barnwood Brown, and that definitely looks like Barnwood. And then this one is the Weathered Look, and that definitely looks like Weathered Barnwood. But what I am going to go with is the Charcoal Look. So this has a burnt look. This is a little bit different than the black that we used on the tabletop. And the reason I'm going with the charcoal for the base is I want the base to be dark and I want your attention to be drawn to the top. The top of the table I want to be the focus with all the cool colors. If you're wondering how is this different than paint is this is really really thin so there, is, there are no brush strokes. It soaks into the wood and becomes part of the wood where paint kind of sits on top. Plus this is, this is more of an effect than a coating. So it becomes part of the wood, it soaks in and gives it that burnt charcoal look to it. Now to protect this, I'm using some wipe-on polyurethane. And I'm using the satin because I don't want a shiny finish on the base. And so now that the glue has dried, I can wipe on some polyurethane. Polyurethane typically has a, an amber hue to it and that warm hue is going to bring out the warm colors that I have on this. So that's why I chose the oil-based polyurethane. To attach the top to the base, I'm going to use these dust top fasteners. Basically, you take a drill bit the size of this circle right here and you drill down the thickness of this piece and then this gets screwed onto there. And then from underneath, you can screw in the top 
to the base. The cool thing about these desktop fasteners is it allows for expansion and contraction. Our top is solid wood, so it's definitely going to expand and contract throughout the seasons. So once you screw that in there, it's allowed to pivot in place to allow that movement. This is looking so good. I am so happy with the way this is coming out. I've got one last thing that I want to do and I want to add some of this soft touch wax. This does add a little bit of protection, but mostly I like the way wax feels on wood. So we're just going to wipe this on. You let it sit for like 10 minutes and then you, you buff it out all by hand. The purpose of this video is to show you that you don't need a shop full of tools. The only two power tools we used today was the circular saw and the hand drill. I really love the way this top came out. It's colorful, it's bright. I love the way it looks. And I wanted to show you that you can get creative with Minwax's wood effects and their stains. All of the products that I use in this video will be linked down below. And I have a PDF of the drawing of this table so you can get the measurements for that and make your own. And if you do make this, please tag me in your Instagram or Twitter photos. I would love to see what you do with this. All right, that is going to wrap it up. We'll see you next week with another project. As always, be safe, have fun, stay passionate, and make something. Good, good shot of his butt. Look at, he's got a butt highlighter. <laughs> <laughs>